And at this point, you have a disgruntled player who has the two years left in his contract. He... Oh, good. You're shutting yourself up. I'm glad. Just is, is there is there is there duct tape on the other end of that? Just to keep you quiet. No. Oh, OK, but uh... I'm just my COVID-19 uh, mask. Man, I just keep getting spaced out here because of the distractions. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Damn you. But uh, as I was saying. Yeah, um, there'll be a lot of editing in this one, that's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about what's going on here with Jamal Adams as he has demanded a trade. Uh, he has given a list of teams that he would like to go to the Jets, and then on top of that, uh, was seen from his car down in Texas. He lives in Texas, we all know, uh, telling a supposed Cowboys fan that, yeah, you know, he wants to go to play for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's trying to work out a trade. So to discuss this and more, I bring you on the one and only Dan Feuerstein. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing okay. It's been a good Tuesday so far, but still, though... Uh very upset with the entire Jamal Adams situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we understand it's the NFL. There's no guaranteed contracts. Um, there's no uh, sense of, you know, positive deals for the players that are trying to make as much money as possible. We all understand this. It's, it's not that hard to understand. But what's really hard to understand is this whole situation that Jamal Adams has put the Jets in and the Jet fans in as well as himself because it's not about sticking with the process. It's about what he has to do for himself. Now, look, we all have to do things for ourselves. I understand that. But what really makes me mad and what really makes me angry is the way he did it. Mm-hmm. Just because... He got upset that Joe Douglas was taking phone calls from other general managers within the league that he was being disrespected. Um, Isn't that what a general manager is supposed to do? Mm Isn't that what a general manager is supposed to do, at least to entertain these phone calls? Now, he didn't act on it Mm -hmm. because if he would have acted on it, Jamal Adams would not be here. Mm -hmm. So – I'm just really annoyed and really, really angry that Mr. Adams would just go off the deep end and already start demanding things where A. There? Yep. Okay. Uh, Yeah, you just popped off for a second. But anyway, I I know know exactly where you're going. So let me just jump into this here, folks. And the problem that I have here with Jamal Adams is – It's all about him. And here is a guy who's propped up as the leader of the football team, leader of the franchise, right? He's supposed to be one of the the centerpieces of this this, uh, new era of Jets football. And he has basically shot that to to hell by worrying about a contract that still has two years and $14 million on it. Five years this year, nine and a half next year. Not to mention there's a franchise tag in 2022, so he's not an unrestricted free agent until 2023 at the very least. So yes. why – why if I understand you want to get paid. I understand Christian McCaffrey got paid by the Panthers. I know Miles Garrett's about to get paid. Joe Douglas is in a situation where he's made it very abundantly clear. He can't pay out big contracts right now. He can't do it for the simple no. reason that he does not know – Consider the state of the, of the league right now with COVID-19, you don't know what the salary cap is going to be in 2021. It could be the same as it was last year. It could be different. It could be less because there's not going to be any fans in the building. We don't even know if we're going to have a season this year. So it's going to have a huge effect on the salary cap. You you're already, you're already only have about $58 million in salary cap room for next year because of all the big contracts that Mike McCagnon had spent on the last, last season before he was fired. So – there's no room here for Joe Douglas to go in. So he's doing the right thing, saying, look, Jamal, we want to keep you. We want to pay you. We want you to be a piece of this franchise for a long time, but you're going to have to wait just a little bit. And at the same time, he's taking calls. That's his job. I know a lot of people have been pining, oh, this is the same old Jets. This is what they always do. They screw things up. The, Joe Douglas, in this case, did his job. He's supposed to go out there and try to – even. If, Go out there and try to improve the football team. You're telling me that Bill Belichick, for example, 
didn't try to doesn't shop his players we know he does so the city wants to say that this is some kind of unique that oh my god joe douglas called the cowboys in october what are we going to do this is so disrespectful give me a break it's really ridiculous and stupid because here's the thing that really bothers me it's not just the way that jamal adams um has been acting it's also the pundits saying what they said typical jets why are they not paying him this – why are they not paying Jamal Adams the money he deserves? They should just rip up the contract, that his rookie contract, and pay him the money he's owned now. Even Ray Lucas on Sportsnet New York on the Jets postgame shows, he has said pay the man his money, which I agreed. I agreed because, you know, I am sick and tired of seeing the Jets in the past – great players that they've drafted and not keep them after a certain amount of years, whether it's after their, their rookie deals or after their rookie deals plus another, another year or two in the con- on a new contract because we know how talented he is. Mm-hmm. Yet, everyone's piling on the Jets now while they're not even looking at the salary cap situation that they're in. Mm-hmm. Just like you said. We don't know if the league's going to raise the salary cap. We don't know if it'll be the same. We don't even know if it'll be reduced. Mike McCagden gave how much money guaranteed to C.J. Mosley, to that James be- Crowder, to, yeah. to, to Le'Veon Bell, and a couple of other players. So I'm sick and tired of hearing these pundits pile on the Jets. Joe Douglas learned how to become a general manager through who? Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom, an African American football player, is the general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, who has won two Super Bowl titles. Two Super Bowl titles. And he, Mr. Joe Douglas, learned from one of the best general managers, who is not Bill Belichick, in the NFL. And Jamal Adams needs to check his ego more than once at the door. He definitely does. I mean, it's really become, like I said, it's become all about him. His list of demands, the team, I mean, the teams he lists are ridiculous. He wants all all the playoff teams that have been to the playoffs over the last couple of years: the uh, the uh, Eagles, the Cowboys, the uh, the Ravens, the Seahawks, the 49ers. Throws the Bucks in there because they're Brady and Gronkowski are there. The unprofessionalism that he has displayed here, throwing his team consistently under the bus, tweeting as he did. To Marcus May saying, "Hey man, it was nice, a nice balling in with you. Uh, I'm gonna miss playing with you, you're, dude. You're still under contract for two more years. I know. What are you doing? It, it, it's ridiculous. If there is a reconcilable differences right now, and the Jets and Joe Douglas decide that's it, we can't, we can't keep him anymore. We're gonna trade him. Not only do not trade him to those teams that he asked for. Don't even trade him to the Cowboys. Don't trade him to a playoff team." Trade him to a team that's worse than the Jets. Wait, let me just let me just slow you down for a sec. Just calm down. Calm down. Oh! Yes. <laughs> I have a dump button and I will use it. Um, uh-huh. if you get if you get two years of first round draft picks from a team, that's gonna be a lot, which is basically what the Jets asked for from Dallas and they didn't want to do it. Why? Because that's mortgaging the future. No team's gonna do that. So you're looking for at least two first round picks for him. Ideally, that's what you're looking for. More likely, you're going to get second-round picks, maybe third-round picks. And at this point, when you have a disgruntled player who has two years left in his contract, yes, would I have him the Jets? Would I look to trade him right now? I would definitely consider it, especially if, if he's washed his hands on the franchise the way he has. You know, well, do I really want this player to come into camp when and if we open camp next month? And uh, he's holding out, or doesn't? And and if he does come back, what's going to happen here? I mean, what what, what kind of situation? How fluid is this situation going to be? And if it's not going to improve, you have to deal him. You have to deal him. Maybe you should have traded him before the draft. That's an order under the bridge now. You have to make a move right now if you're Joe Douglas at some point between now and October when the deadline comes up. And that's it. I would. Uh, you have. I think at this point you have to cut. You have to cut your losses if you're the Jets. Which is very sad because you know I think I've said to you in the past I don't want him traded. I, I want him to stay because you know the type of talent he is and. You know, he's very good. Look, three years in the NFL, he has proven to be one of the top playmakers in the NFL on defense. He's proven himself on third downs. He's proven himself on fourth downs that he is a very dangerous player, 
uh, if you are a quarterback of the opposition. But the way he has acted, or shall we say is plotting against the Jets because he wants out. He doesn't want to be here anymore. He would rather be at home in Dallas. It it, it just really hurts. Mm -hmm. And it's really terrible. He's trying to use social media as his tool to say goodbye. It's not not fair. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not fair to his teammates. It's not fair to the coaching staff. It's not fair to the fans, nor is it fair to the ownership. It's not even fair to Joe Douglas, who officially, after the draft ended, he starts his second year as general manager of the New York Jets. Also, he's taking it too personal. What happened last exactly. year? He took it way That's too personal. Deep. It's part of the business. And if you can, you have to understand that this is a business. Players get talked about. They get traded all the time. Um, I hate to say that because, it's you know, true. these are human beings we're talking about. You know, they have lives. They have, uh, you know, situ- mortgages, you know, rents, payments, all these things they have to take care of. I, I totally get yeah. that. But you know what? It, it is a business, unfortunately, at the it end is. of the day. And uh, for Jamal Adams, I think that his time in New York, unfortunately, he's circumvented his own exit. And that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. We'll have to wait and see um, until uh, we get there to that certain point. As of right now, he's under contract with the Jets. As Two as years as well. left on the deal. Of course, uh, this year was supposed to be his last year until the Jets picked up his option year. And like you said, they still have franchise tag availability towards him if they want to keep him in another six, a sixth year or not. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, hey, get back here. Sorry. Video's not over yet. Let me just talk about one more thing here. Hey, everybody. Michael Cohen here on the Sports Talk Nation. Really quick uh, addendum to the video that you've just seen regarding my conversation with Dan Feuerstein on the Jamal Adams situation. Well, when we recorded that, it was before the story that came out from the Daily News by Manish Mehta regarding the potential that Adam Gase is a big reason why Jamal Adams wants to trade. Now, while I still feel feel it's not good, it's not it's certainly not good PR for Adams to sit there and w- request a trade right now, uh, at this point, we still have two years left in his deal, even though I understand he wants his money, and I don't blame him from that standpoint. But still, if Adam Gase is playing a big role in this, should we really be surprised? I mean, this is a guy who's had a history of running guys out of town. He did that in Miami with J.H.I. and uh, Jarvis Landry. He has, rubbed, he has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way here at the Jets. Uh, of course, Le'Veon Bell last year, now Jamal Adams. So should we be surprised at all that Adam Gase is a big part of the problem? Absolutely not. He is not a good head coach. Uh, he has proven that time and again. And a guy here is a guy who is very, very arrogant in, in Gase, who just for whatever reason doesn't get along with players. And that's now continuing here with the Jets. The article goes into, into detail about how a lot of players don't like playing for Gase. Only you know, Sam Darnold and the backup quarterback, David Fales, tolerate Gase. That's not great. Now, it is coming from a source, a guy, a Manish Mehta, a guy who put, <laughs> created a, an article or created a, a Twitter account a lot of people believe uh, a fake Adam Gates Twitter account last year. So it is coming from a source that has, you know, kind of a shaky background from that standpoint in, in Meta. But still, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, and it just adds to the complexity and the problems that go on with this football team and this franchise every single year. And especially here since Gates was hired as the head coach. That was a big mistake, as we all know. Just made a big mistake bringing him in here. Um, and now you have a situation here with one of its best, one of the team's best players, and one of the best players in the foot in the National Football League who wants out. And he wants to be traded. And he wants to be traded. Seem, seems like he wants to be traded now, for that matter, if you listen to the demands from a couple weeks ago. So I want to put that in there. I want to make sure that's in there so everyone knows that yes, we're on top of the what we're on top of what's going on here with the Adam Gase part of this issue that's going on here with uh, Jamal Adams. But still, as I said, not a great look for Adams, not a great look for the Jets either, especially uh the head coach of the New York Jets, Adam Gase, who Goes into this year with a 7-9 record. And let's be honest. You know, if we do have a season this year, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on Mr. Gase to go out there and win some games. Uh, this team has to go out there, win 9, 10 games this year. Uh, be competitive, be a playoff caliber team this year. Not saying he's guaranteed to get get, get the axe. If they end up winning, as I said, 9, 10 games, probably not going to go anywhere. But he's got to do that first uh, and really start to earn his keep as head coach of this team. Because obviously, if you read, read that article in the Daily News, Players are on, he and the players right now are on thin ice, for that matter. And that's a big problem. So, 
Remember, folks, to follow us on social media and Facebook.com slash OpenMicProgram at OpenMikeNJ on Twitter. And also remember to like and subscribe right here to the Sports Talk Nation. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.